Hello again, and uh, let us continue. So, uh, in last uh, video, basically, yes, we have explained uh, some mathematical background. It was rather difficult, I understand, and no one is expecting from you to show this knowledge on the exam. So, this was basically just to show you that we have indeed some serious mathematics behind these codes. And uh, this allows us to perform this coding and decoding processes uh, very simple way. Yes, now you will see to yourself how this coding is performed. And at the same time, this code, Hemming cyclic code, is actually optimal. Optimal in a way that we add minimum number of redundancy to get the maximum output to correct a single error. There is not much, not so much. Uh, such uh, optimal codes, yes, and having code is one of them, basically thanks to this mathematics theory. So, uh, cyclic codes, not, not necessarily only Hamming codes, but there are other cyclic codes, mainly, for example, both childhood Hockingham codes, which can correct more than one error, but we'll talk here in our course mostly about Hamming codes, yes, which is a specific case of about well, basically Becheha codes, yes, which can correct only one error. So basically, Becheha code capable of correcting one error is actually a Hamming code. So Hamming code is a specific case of these Becheha codes, yes, which is simpler. So uh, we are talking about polynomial error correcting codes. So that means that each of the code words can be represented as a polynomial in a very simple, singular way, as I have shown you that number 1024, yes, can be expressed as the uh, series, yes, of the powers of 10. So in our case, however, we are using base uh, denoted by this variable Z and accordingly this is a binary form of our code word, and this is the respective polynomial form of our code word. So you can see here this coefficient 1, this coefficient is 1, this coefficient is 0, this coefficient is 1, and accordingly 0, 0, 1. Yes, uh, it's rather simple. We just take the coefficient and multiply it with power of z starting with 6, because we have m7 here, yes, m is equal to 7, so these are numbers from 6 to 0, including, yes, so 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0, there are total also 7 numbers. And we uh, also work only with systematic code. So for group code, we had some specific reason to make non-systematic codes, uh, mainly the simpler uh, correction of the errors. But for cyclic code, there will be no such thing. And accordingly, we don't really have any reason to make non-systematic code. That is why all cyclic codes that are given to you in your course project are also only systematic one. Yes, we don't need to make life for ourselves more difficult by putting symbols in some different order because it will also will have no benefit for us. So we are working with systematic code. And as you can see, here is the data and here is the control symbols. So now the question is, how do we find these control symbols for this data? For group code, we had a set of coding equations, and these coding equations actually produced as these symbols, yes, such as, for example, A3 was equal to some combination of information symbols. Well, I don't really remember, but for example, like this, yes. So C are information symbols, E are control symbols. For cyclic codes, it is going to be a little bit different because we need to use different operations. So. Before that, although we, I'd like to stress out again um, importance of uh, mathematical background of these algebraic structures, polynomial rings, Galois fields, and uh, this allows us making the optimal code. And Hamming code is actually optimal. And at the same time, it's more uh, convenient and easier to implement in schematic 
if we are talking about some greater length than 7, for example, M31. For group code uh, for M31, the schematic would be rather big, and uh, for cyclic code, it will be much more compact, will have much less components. At the same time, however, it will be logically more complex. Yes, so I will try to explain it as best as I can to you in these lectures today. But uh, if you have any questions left, you can always ask. Yes. So here is a pol actually a polynomial. Yes, which is one of the ring uh, elements, and uh, the coefficients are actually from Galois field two. Yes, or either one or zero. So everything I have shown you will be uh, basically valid for these codes. Yes, and uh, that is the base. So. Mm, both coding and decoding process involves a special generator polynomial. So we need to have some polynomial which uh, is used for coding and decoding. And for that reason, each of you has in your course project. So let me actually uh, find it and show. So course project. Uh, the tasks. Uh, so each of you who has a cyclic code also has this generator polynomial defined for him. Yes, so you can see it here. You can see it here. Well, actually, actually, I'm not so certain about this polynomial. I think this is an actual error. Do we have Z3, Z3? Yes, so this is actually an error. I will correct it after this lecture, but for those of you who have polynomial Z4, Z2, Z1, yes, you need to make sh be aware that it's actually my mistake, and here we should have three, not two. So everybody who has four degree. So this is correct. This is five, Z2, Z4, but I'm talking about if we are having first number four. Yes, so if we have first number four, then the second must be either one or three. So here is two, which is incorrect. It, it must be three. Next fourth degree polynomial is here, which is also incorrect. This must be three. Next polynomial is four. Here is one. This is correct. You don't need to change it to three. You only need to change to three if you have here two. Yes, and here four. I will correct it after this lecture, but if you are already uh, looking it and trying to do something, uh, then you need to be aware that this is my mistake and I'm sorry for that, but I didn't see it before. So I will correct that after this lecture. So, okay, what is this generator polynomial? Actually, this is a modulus. Yes, so here you can see that we have performed this operation over this modulus. And this generator polynomial is this modulus, which makes this polynomial ring. Yes, and uh, accordingly, different codes can have different generator <coughs> polynomials. Yes, so, uh, so yes, and you cannot really choose any polynomial you like. It has to meet specific requirements. Yes, and the requirements are multiple. First of all, its power should be the number of the control symbol. So if we have 7 for code, yes, in my example, M is 7, which is number of information symbols, Oh, sorry, code word length, so number of code symbols. Then K is 4, which is number of information symbols. And R is 3, which is number of control symbols. Control. And as you can see, polynomial has also power of three. This is the first condition, yes? So the power of this polynomial must be the same as the number of correction symbols. 
uh, but it, this is not a single condition. Also, these polynomials cannot be factored into smaller, smaller polynomials. So, for example, if we take z power of 3 plus z plus 1, it is impossible to write this polynomial with smaller powers, like, for example, z power of 2 plus 1 uh, multiplied with z power of 1 plus 1. For example, if I try to break it into these smaller brackets, yes, if I multiply it, it will be totally different polynomial. So th that would be z power of 3 uh, multiplied with uh, plus, plus z power of 2 plus z plus plus that's all, yes? So it's different polynomial, yes? So this polynomial can be factored. And the result of this factoring will be this. This polynomial, however, cannot be factored in any smaller polynomials. So that is the first uh, important mathematical condition. It is uh, basically irreducible polynomial, yes? Also, in addition to that, this polynomial must divide B norm, uh, z power of m, with this generator polynomial without reminder. So let's see what does that mean for our code. For our code, m is 7. So that means that at z7 degree plus 1 should divide this, should divide with this uh, generator polynomial without a reminder. So let us perform this division and see if it's true. So in order to get to a read of this 7 degree, we need to multiply with z power 4. So that would give us z7 plus uh, z5 plus z4, which will give us a result z power 5 plus z power 4 plus 1. We can still continue a division because this z power 5 is greater than this z power 3. So we need to add z power of 2 here, and uh, that will give us z power 5 plus z power of 3 plus z power of 2. So we add together. Well, basically in classic uh, division here we have subtraction, yes, but as a, as I have already mentioned, we are dealing with Galois field 2, and that means that we have modulus 2 for subtraction, which is the same as addition for modulus 2. Yes, so that's why I'm using here plus rather than minus, because minus and plus are the same result for Galois field 2 only. Yes, GF2, which consists of zeros and ones. So, uh, here we cancel out this z5 and we are left with z4 plus z3 plus z2 plus 1. Now we multiply this with 1. Yes, so basic, oh, z, I'm sorry, z, not 1. So this will give us z4 plus uh, z2 plus uh, z. Yes, so we cancel out z4, we cancel out z squared, and we are left with z3 plus z plus 1, which is still possible to be divided because this is not smaller, this is equal, but not smaller. Yes, so we continue. We can add this again. And as you can see, this produces a zero reminder. So this is so far valid generator polynomial for code with length 7. And in addition to that, no other binomial of lower power, meaning not z6 plus 1, uh, z5 plus 1, z4 plus 1, and any other smaller than z7 plus 1. So z7 plus 1 should give zero reminder. All these others should not give zero reminder. I will not divide them all. You can check that for yourself that it is actually true. Yes, but only seventh degree uh, binom after dividing with this 
generator polynomial will give zero reminder. All the others, this will give some non-zero reminder, non-zero, non-zero reminder, yes? So if these conditions are met, then this polynomial is actually valid generator polynomial. And for that reason, this isn't really valid generator polynomial because uh, I believe it can be probably factored, yes? Probably, uh, but I'm not really sure about that. No, it cannot be factored, but still it will produce um, non-zero reminder for smaller than 15, uh, 15. Uh, well, actually, I'll show you a little bit later this reason why it cannot be used as generator polynomial when we'll talk about uh, error vectors and syndromes, yes. So, these properties, if they are met, will enable this generator polynomial to actually give us the number of syndromes so that uh, each error will have its own syndrome. It is very important from the group code, as you remember, that each error should have different syndrome. Otherwise, it will be impossible to tell where exactly is the error. So, now we have considering that uh, generator polynomial has been selected. And this generator polynomial actually can be easily found in Wikipedia, for example. Yes, let us try and see. So, uh, aiming code generator polynomials. And we can see, for example, polynomial code, Wikipedia, polynomial code tool generator, and so forth. Well, let's see Wikipedia example. Again, some more mathematics here, yes, and so cyclic codes. This is what we are more interested in, and we are interested in Hamming code, yes. Uh, no, generator polynomial. Well, okay, then in Wikipedia it's not so fast to find. Let us see. Cyclic uh, for example. There is a function that can generate this polynomials, yes. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, maybe let us see for ourselves an octal. So I think it was called gen poly. No. Ah, we need to load. Load communications. Uh, and uh, MATLAB. Uh, Gen Poly, I believe it was called. Uh, ah, Cycle Poly, I'm sorry. Help, Cycle Poly. Yes, so this is a function that can actually generate cyclic code polynomials for code with N and K. So I'm going to specify Cycle Poly. Uh, seven four, yes. I'm. I need to see all of them, and you can see two generator polynomials. If we convert them into polynomial form, that would be z power of three plus z power of two plus one, and the second one accordingly will be z power of three plus z plus one. So. Uh, what I would like to mention here is that you do not really need to check for yourself if this polynomial actually has zero reminder with that binom and not if it can be reduced or it cannot be, because you can always find it in literature, in internet, a list of valid code uh, polynomials, yes. Similarly, let us check out the polynomial of the degree uh, 4, yes, so basically 1511 code. So this is polynomial z power of 4 
plus z power of 3 plus 1. And this is the polynomial z power of 4 plus z plus 1. So as you can see, no polynomial z power of 3, 4 plus z power of 2 plus 1 listed here. It's not present here, so this is incorrect. Uh, and that is the error in your course project uh, task. And also, the last one will be z power of 4 plus z power of 3 plus z power of 2 plus z plus 1, which can also be a valid generator polynomial of the power of 4. This hasn't been given to any of you because it's too long and may make more difficult your task, which can already be, uh, well, comparing to group code, for some people, some might, might consider it more difficult because these codes are really different and uh, some codes are easier to understand by one people, some codes are easier to understand by other people and so forth. So we now have this generator polynomial. Either we have found it ourselves or we used software to get information about that. Uh, it's not really relevant. The important thing that we have this generator polynomial. So how do we make allowed code words? So the trick is that any allowed code word, any allowed code word can be divided by this generator polynomial with zero remainder. So code word divided by generator polynomial has zero reminder. So if the reminder is zero, then no error. If the reminder is not zero, we have an error. And depending on what exactly is our reminder, we can find where that error has happened. So the idea is very simple. Our allowed code word actually is multiplication of some polynomial with our generator polynomial. Yes. This uh, division result is usually not interesting. For, in, not interesting for us. We usually skip it because it uh, doesn't really give us any information. This isn't our data, this isn't control, this is just some intermediary result of calculations. So the error detection this way is based on finding a reminder. So we have this theorem of reminder claiming that we can, for example, specify number, I don't know, uh, 13, for example, to be, uh, well, to be uh, written if we take, for example, modulus 3, yes, modulus 3, written in this way, that it's 4 multiplied with modulus plus 1, yes, and this way, if we divide 13 by our modulus, we get result 4, and the reminder one, yes. So this is our number, yes. This is our modulus. Uh, then this is the answer of the division. And uh, accordingly, lastly, this is our reminder. So this all can be put together according to this theorem of the reminder into this expression that we multiply the division result with divider, which in our case is generator polynomial, and add reminder. And that would give us uh, the, well, basically potentially error containing code word. So if reminder is zero, which is possible, yes, then uh, we have no errors. But if the reminder is not zero, then we can have an error, yes? So this is uh, the trick. Also, please note that we are using addition over modulus 2 here, and multiplication is a simple multiplication for polynomials over modulus of generator polynomial. So how do we generate this code word? So it's all nice and well uh, that allowed code word has zero reminder, but how do we actually find it? Well, the trick is very simple. Again, let us return to this example. And uh, what is what is what does 
okay let us let me write it again so i have modulus modulus 3 yes so in my case 3 is this generator polynomial well sort of yes uh, i have uh, this uh, 13 as code word with error because reminder of 13 divided by 3 is not 0 yes so rem uh, 13 to 3 is actually 1 reminder yes and accordingly I'd like to know now what number is and how do I get this 13 to number that has zero reminder? Actually, it's very simple. What I do is find this reminder, yes, R, and subtract it from, uh, from my code word. So I make 13 minus this reminder, which is 12. And now this 12 will be divided by three without any reminder, yes? So the trick is that I actually subtract this reminder from both parts of this equation here and here. As I have mentioned previously, subtraction and addition is the same operation. So basically, we are just moving this reminder from this part of equation to this. Yes, and that is the trick. That is how we will generate this code word. First, we are going to find this reminder and then we are going to add it to our code word. So, this works like following. Uh, oper uh, basically, the uh, steps we need to generate the code word. Yes, so we take our data, yes, which is, for example, 1101 in my particular case, uh, because uh, our information symbols are 4 and we need for code word to have 7. Yes, this is M parameter. We actually need to write three more zeros at the end of our data. Yes, we, we, we are putting just zeros here, which accordingly in polynomial form represents multiplying with Z power of R. So basically our original data polynomial here is, uh, let's write it down, X, y, at X of Z is uh, Z power of three plus z power of 2 plus 1. After multiplying it with z power of uh, 3, because in our case r is 3, yes, and z power of 3 multiplied with our x, that would give accordingly here z power of 6, here z power of 5, and here z power of 3, which is uh, this, yes, our data and appended zeros. Then we find out this reminder. Yes, so I already have done that. So if I divide this polynomial with my generator polynomial, I will get this reminder. So I just add it to my code word and this will be a valid code word. Yes, so let us see with the example how to do this. So the entire process is very simple. We append zeros at the end, we calculate reminder, and we add this reminder to data. So that is the coding procedure. So let's see example. Let us take, for example, code with length seven. So that will give us three control symbols and generator polynomial which is also specified. So you need to know that this generator polynomial for you is specified. I select some data, user data, and convert it into polynomial. Yes, so basically my data is in binary form like this, and in polynomial form is accordingly this polynomial. Here we have all uh, powers specified, which is here zero coefficient. Here we have, well, let us say short version of this polynomial. Accordingly, I append three zeros, or in general case, R zeros, yes. In polynomial form, this accordingly means multiplying with Z power of three, which gives us this polynomial. 
next step is to find the reminder of the division of this appended by zeros data block divided by generator polynomial. Yes, so I perform this division. So it has already been prepared by me previously. Yes, and I get a reminder one. Yes, accordingly, I add this reminder to my polynomial, which I was using to divide with the generator polynomial and convert it into a binary form. And this is code word that has no errors. So if I divide this polynomial now, I will have zero errors. So let me actually see if. Ah, OK, before that, I'd like to mention that it is possible to make this division in more compact binary form. Yes, so here, as you can see, I'm not writing polynomial, but my data block. So data block, three zeros, and generator polynomial in binary form. So generator polynomial was Z3 plus Z plus one. Yes, so basically Z3, Z2, Z1, and just one, yes. And accordingly, uh, maybe I will guide you through this process because it may be not so obvious. If this uh, process is something we learned in school and you might remember it if you uh, tried yourself a few times, then this maybe is not so obvious. So I'd like to uh, show you it step by step. How do I get these results? So I take my data, I append three zeros and divide it with generator polynomial. So uh, I start from this position because here I have symbol one and take this one time. So here we can write either one or zero. So I start with one here because I can perform this division and basically subtract or in my particular case it's the same as add this generator polynomial to this data. Yes and uh, perform this XOR operation bit by bit. So one plus one is zero. 1 plus 0 is 1, uh, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 0. Yes, now I have three digits and I uh, take down next digit 0 here. Then I look if I have four digits because in order to divide with the generator polynomial, I must have four digits. Now I do have here four digits so I can continue a division. So I write one and Again, perform division. Subtract everything. So here we have one, one, and one. And again, I continue this process by taking next digit. Now I still have four digits, so I can continue this division. Yes, plus this. So one, zero, one and I get my last digit. Again, I can divide it. So one zero one one plus and I get this reminder. Now in binary form, all you need to do is just put this reminder you have obtained instead of these zeros you have written here. Yes, so basically you add it to these three symbols and that is your code word. Now we can check if this code word is actually valid one by performing decoding process. So decoding is uh, again calculating the same reminder. So now as we have subtracted our reminder from our number or in our particular case exactly the same as added, yes, this should have no reminder because we intentionally use this reminder theorem. Yes, by adding this uh, reminder to get as a result some code word which should have zero. So basically, if we take the same example with our uh, data, which was four, for example, uh, no, sorry which was 13, yes. We divide it by three, get result four and a reminder of one. Yes, this four is not really interesting for us, but 
we make accordingly our code word as 12, which is 13 minus 1. And now this 12, after dividing with 3, we will give us same 4, but the reminder will be 0. So this way, if we subtract this reminder from our code word, we automatically ensure that the reminder should be 0. Of course, as you imagine, when we transmit data in channel, because of noise, this can change. So if it will change, the reminder will not be zero, and that is obviously the case of error. But if everything is okay, the reminder is zero, and we know that we have no error. So again, let us take step by step this division. Uh, sorry, I am reading incorrect symbol now. Uh, one, zero, one. And we now should get zero reminder because we didn't change anything in this uh, code word, yes? So let's see if it's true. Again, I am sub uh, subtracting it here. Well, subtracting or adding. Yes. And basically this process up to this last digit will repeat itself, yes? Exactly the same way because nothing has changed. So I'm making next digit. I will show you what happens if we don't have four digits here. And that a little bit changes uh, process, yes, but not really much. A little bit later. So, get next digit. I have four, I can continue. Yes, next digit. Again, I have four. I can continue. So result of division is the same, yes, as before, but as I mentioned, it isn't really used anywhere. We are interested only in reminder. So we have reminder zero, that means no errors and everything is correct, yes? That is how this code operates. It divides it by generator polynomial at uh, transmitter side, sends data, divides it uh, receiver side with the same generator polynomial and sees that the reminder is zero. So if reminder is zero, no errors. Okay then, but what is if during the process of transmission, because of the noise, our code word became restricted? So basically containing an error. So as you know, we can specify this error introduction process as the error vector. So basically I have my code word, yes, and I can simulate the error by adding some error vector. For example, in the first symbol and all the others, I'll be unaffected. So this way I'm uh, having here zero, which is an error, and all the other symbols were not affected. Yes, so that's how we introduce this error mathematically by adding this error vector. So this is error vector. And if we now divide this data with generator polynomial, the reminder should not be zero. And accordingly, it will indicate that we have error. Yes, so let's see what happens. And what I'd like to prove you, to you now that it's not really important uh, what data we have here. It's not relevant. Yes, we can have any data here. What matters the most, what reminder we will get is this error vector itself, actually. Yes, so only this error vector will tell us what exactly reminder we have. And that is quite simple to prove. Yes, uh, let us see. Consider that A to Z is a loud code word. So a reminder of this code word is zero. So this is original before noise and it has zero reminder. So this uh, statement accordingly shows that the reminder of our code word divided by generator polynomial is zero. Now A to Z is actually code word with error, which is modulated, simulated by uh, adding error vector 
to our code word. So this is error vector. Vector, yes. Yes, so that's when we divide our code word with error, we generate a polynomial, we should have reminder, reminder not zero. But at the same time, let us remember that this A uh, restricted code word is actually the superposition of allowed code word and uh, error vector. So we can open these brackets. Yes, we can divide separately our code word and separately error vector in a very similar way as with our example of 12. Yes, for example, consider that because of the error, we now received uh, not 12, but uh, let us say 14. Yes. And the error vector in my case is 2. So what I like to show you is that if I divide 14 with modulus 3, I will get reminder of 2. And if I make it like this, 12 plus 2 modulus 3, I will get it like this, 12 modulus 3 plus 2 modulus 3. Accordingly, this automatically cannot give any reminder because 12 was designed to be zero reminder and all the reminder is basically because of this error vector, yes? So the idea is that this has zero reminder. And accordingly, reminder of this entire operation depends on reminder of error vector with uh, this generator polynomial. Yes, so this is actually called a syndrome. In our particular case, this syndrome is a reminder. Yes, accordingly, we can make a table of these possible reminders and, uh, well, in order to find them, we need to perform division. But first, let me actually show to you that this actually does work. So let us, as I have said, introduce error at the first position. Here is error, yes. And all the other symbols will not be changed. 0, 0, 1. I divide it with generator polynomial. Now, my first symbol one is located here, so that is where I start start my division process at. So one zero one one plus yes, uh, I have it like one, and all other symbols are zeros. Yes, so I take next symbol. And as you can see, I do not have two symbols, so I cannot divide. I write here zero. I take next next symbol. Again, I cannot really divide. I write zero and I don't have any more symbols. So reminder is one zero zero. Yes. Ah, sorry, one zero one. I didn't uh, make this last symbol correctly. It is one. And it's also accordingly taken here as one. So it's one, zero, one. What I'd like to prove to you now is that if I divide this error vector, I will also get the same reminder. So let's see how it works. Yes. Now I start from here because here is the first symbol one. Yes, one, one. I take next symbol. I have three symbols. I cannot divide them with four, so I type here zero. I take next symbol. Now I have four symbols. I can divide. Okay. Next step. I have all ones. I take the last symbol. I have four symbols, so I can divide. Then I get a reminder. 1, 0, 1, which is the same. So as you can see, all this reminder has been introduced by this error vector only. Yes. So if I take another error in different position, I will get different reminder. So 
I can make a table. In order to find each reminder, I need to take the error vector, for example, this, and divide it with generator polynomial. So this is quite long process. If you have, for example, M31, that means you have to calculate 31 division. But do not be alarmed. It's actually possible to find, for example, this reminder from this. So, for example, if I would have 31, well, actually, let us take some example. So, M31 would be this code, yes. So, generator polynomial, I will write it in binary form. So, in binary form, Z5, Z4, Z3 is absent, so I type 0, Z2, Z, and uh, 1. Yes, so that is my generator polynomial for M31. So it starts very simple, yes. If I start with this error vector, I cannot really perform division with my generator polynomial because I have only one symbol. So these three last digits go as a reminder. Similarly, these three last digits go as a reminder. These three digits go as a reminder. So in my particular case, I now have generator polynomial considering consisting of six digits. So that means that my error vector, well, I'm not typing it completely, last symbols only, will give us accordingly five symbols of syndrome like this. Next error vector. Uh, sorry. Here is one. We'll give accordingly these five symbols. And so forth, so forth, up to uh, zero, 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 one, which still cannot be divided with this generator polynomial because it has six digits, and here I have five digits, yes? This will accordingly give us uh, Okay, give us uh, this reminder. So we have unity I matrix, yes, basically here. Uh, and then next error vector can be calculated from this syndrome in the following way. So for example, consider that I need to find next syndrome, which would be here. I can do it two ways. I can divide it, yes, one and then a lot of zeros, five zeros, divided my, with my generator polynomial. Uh, I will be able to start divisions from this point only. Yes, so I type it here. And find the reminder, which would be 10111. Or alternatively, I can take this previous reminder which was one zero 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 zero, append extra zero at the end, and add my generator polynomial. Yes, one zero one one. The remainder is the same. Yes, and similarly, I can get next reminder by appending extra zero and adding again. So let's see how it works for this case. So first, R are pretty easily to get. This is, well, opposite diagonal unity matrix because I matrix usually have on the main diagonal. This is the secondary diagonal. And basically it's quite simple, yes? Next one is we take reminder 100, zero, zero, append zero, take our generator polynomial, which is this one, yes, plus, and get our new reminder, this one. So in order to get next one, again, what we do is we take reminder which we had previously, one, zero, one, one, append extra zero. Now, however, as you can see, we cannot add. We cannot add because here we have zero. So instead of that, we take last three digits as a reminder. So if our first symbol or multiple first symbols are zeros and we cannot add, we just take last symbols as a reminder. Next 
we take this, append zero. Yes, so this is original reminder, which we have, which we append zero to. Add our generator polynomial and get next reminder. And last reminder, again, uh, we append zero. Yes, and we get this reminder. And furthermore, it turns out that if we would like to continue this process, we'll get first reminder again. Yes, so this code is cyclic, meaning that these reminders will cyclically go one from another. Now I promise to show you why this isn't really nice a uh, nice choice for this generator polynomial. So let's see and try get our reminders for this generator polynomial Z4 plus Z2 plus 1. What is wrong with this polynomial? Why it cannot be used as a generator polynomial? So what we'd like to have is, uh, well, actually, let me start a notepad. Uh, to have these error vectors, so here we have uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 symbols, yes, because uh, M is 15 for that code. And I need all error vectors starting from the last one and going to the first one. So basically easier to make it like this. So I specify each single error vector. I don't really know where we will stop, but uh, at any rate, I will uh, write down them all, and then I will try to get all the reminders for each error vector, because this is important. This reminder is actually showing where is the error, yes? So in this error vector, uh, one means position of the error, and accordingly, let us find reminder. So for the first four, it's quite simple, I just take last four digits of the error vector as a reminder. These are syndromes for these error vectors. Next one must be calculated. So in binary form, this error, uh, this generator polynomial is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Yes. So I take my this error vector append extra zero at the end, add my generator polynomial, and get this reminder. So the reminder is 0, 1, 0, 1. Next step, I take this reminder I have get, gotten so far, yes, so 1, 0, 1, 0, append extra zero, and try to add this. I cannot add because here I need to have five digits starting with one. I have zero. So I'm taking this all as a reminder. Zero, one, and go further. Yes. So now I take this as a reminder. One, zero, one, zero. Append extra zero and add it, add to it my generator polynomial. And I already can see a problem. So reminder is this one. This means that we have a problem. What exactly is the problem? The problem is that we have same syndromes, yes, which cannot be uh, correct because this means that if the reminder of this division is this syndrome, then we cannot really tell if the error is here or error is here. It's impossible to tell. Furthermore, these reminders will continue on, like this will be this reminder, 
this will be this reminder, then we'll have this reminder, then we'll have this reminder, this, and again it will all start over again. Yes. So only if we have selected correct generator polynomial, only in that case, all these uh, reminders will be unique. Yes, as you can see in this table, there are no repetitions. All these reminders are different. And this way it's possible to make you know, identification of the errors because this uh, shows that error is here, this shows that error is here, this shows that error is here, and so forth. However, in my example with this incorrect generator polynomial, it's impossible to tell, for example, if we have this syndrome, is error here or is error here because they have the same syndrome. Yes, so that is the problem. And this has happened because I have chosen the incorrect generator polynomial. And this is an error. So that's why I'm telling you that you need to have three here, not two. Yes, so pay attention to that when you are working with this task. So now we have decoding with one error, yes, and we get some reminder. And if you look at the table of the error vectors, so reminder 111 indeed represents the position of error here. Yes, so it is possible if we have select correct generator polynomial to find this error. And if we can find it, then we can correct it because the error itself is just an inversion of this symbol. Yes, so if we know that the error is here, we change this 0 to 1 and that corrects our error. So, okay, now we have understanding how to perform this coding and decoding operations. And then the next uh, uh, pair today, we'll talk about schematics, how to implement this encoding. So after uh, 13 minutes at 10.15, I will continue with the lecture and then uh, it will take us, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes more. And then after that, uh, Mr. Chen will show you uh, examples for your course project. Yes, so in 15 minutes, in 12 minutes, uh, we will continue with these schematics for cyclic codes. So thank you and see you in 12 minutes.